Hello once again guys, welcome back to my series here on investing in the stock market for beginners. And in this video we're going to be talking about the different order types out there. Now there are dozens of different orders out there and depending on what brokerage you are using, there are so many different ones out there that you could possibly come across. There's only four that I really use and to be honest with you, 90% of the time, maybe even 95% of the time, I just use a market order. But I want to teach you guys the four main order types that people frequently use and these are probably the only ones that you need to know about. About, and anything beyond that is going to be more advanced and you may learn that down the road but at least for now these are the only order types you really need to be familiar with now do keep in mind if you're looking to learn more about investing in the stock market I have a free course on how to find a great investment it is less than one hour long and I will link that up in the description below make sure you guys take that course after you watch this video if you have time to or just go over to the page and bookmark it and check it out later but anyways, now we're going to go ahead and talk about the four main order types that people are using and the ones you should be familiar with. So first of all, we have a market order, we have a limit order, we have a stop loss order, and then a stop limit order. So a market order is the one that most people use, and it is very simple. Your order is filled at the current market price. So this could be a market buy order or a market sell order. Your order is filled immediately at the current market price, assuming you are doing this during trading hours, and that's all there is to it. That's a very simple order to understand and most people only use market orders and they never go beyond that and there's really no problem with that unless you're looking to have more sophisticated options out there or automate certain things or have protection or stop losses and things like that. Now with a limit order you're going to be buying or selling at a maximum or a minimum price and do keep in mind if you're trading on the over-the-counter exchanges through the uh, OTC markets the only order you can execute with is a limit order so you're going to have to be familiar with this one and this will make more sense when we explain this below. And then a stop loss order is a buy or sell order at a set price higher or lower depending on whether or not this is a buy or sell order. This will make more sense when we show you the example here. And then a stop limit order allows you to have a price range where the order is executed at. So let's go ahead and explain this giving you guys numbers because those verbal explanations are not very helpful. They were certainly not helpful to me. I have to see the numbers for it to make sense to me. So the market order as we said that's very simple. It is filled at the current market price. But first of all, let's talk about the limit buy order. So a limit buy order would be if your stock was $10 a share and you wanted to buy it at $9 or below. So you would set a limit buy order at a price of $9 and if that stock fell to $9 or less, your order is going to be executed. Now a limit sell order is the exact same, but it's the opposite direction. So let's say the stock is $10 a share and you want to sell that stock for $11 or more, you would have a limit sell order with a price of $11 and if that stock goes above $11 or equal to 11, that order is going to be filled. Now the stop loss buy is kind of one that people use if they're swing trading, otherwise there would really be no reason to use this order. But it's where you're trying to buy this at a higher price than it is right now. So for example, let's say the stock is $10 a share, there is a resistance point at $10.75, and you want to buy it once it hits $11. You could use a stop loss buy order at a price of $11, which means you're going to pay $11 or more for that stock. But here's the problem with this order type is there is no gap protection. So let's say that the stock closed at $10.50 a share. Overnight you find out the company is being bought out by someone and the stock opens at twice the price it was before. Well guess what? That stock is above $11 a share. Maybe it's even $20 now and your order is filled because your only criteria is the stock has to be above $11 a share. So there's no gap protection with buy or sell stop loss orders. And then with a stop loss sell, it is very similar as well. You could say that I have a stock that's $10 a share and you want to cut your losses below nine. So you set a stop loss order at $9 a share. But again, if that stock fell to $2 a share, then it would be executed if there was no trading in between that range. So you could have a stock close at $9.50 a share and the next day it opens at two bucks a share because the company's going bankrupt or they're being investigated, who knows? Well, guess what? Your order is being filled. So the final order is one that allows you to have gap protection and set a price range and that is a stop limit buy and a stop limit sell order. So let's say you were doing a stop limit buy order, the stock was $10 a share and you were looking to pay between $11 and $11.10. That means that you would set that as your price range and if the stock was in between that at any point in time, the order would be executed. But if it never entered that range and just simply shot past it, so let's say the stock gapped open from $10.50 a share to $12, then that order would not be executed because it never traded between $11 
and 1110. And the same thing with the stop limit sell order, let's say the stock was $10 a share, and you were willing to sell it between $9.10 and $9. If that stock overnight went from $9.50 a share to two bucks a share, the order would not be executed. But anyways, guys, those are the four basic order types in a nutshell. If this is confusing to you, then you really don't even have to use these orders. It's really for more people who are looking to do short-term trading and things like that. With long-term investing, all I use is a market order. It's executed right at that point in time, whether it's a buy or a sell. And so I'm not really using many of these other order types at all but I wanted you guys to be aware of them in case you want to use them anyways thanks for taking the time to watch this video I hope to see you in the next one and have a great rest of your day if you are interested in learning more about investing in the stock market I've created a free course just for you the link is in the description below here are a few other videos you might enjoy as well